uh, five poses of the five Tibetan rites. I'm going to now demonstrate these for you in the traditional format with still with the modification for the lower back. Let's begin. So the first one is the spin. Arms up, shoulders down, gaze is towards the ground, head is, chin is parallel with the ground, not pointing towards the sky, not pointing towards the chest. Parallel, uh, gaze is towards the ground, begin. One, turning clockwise, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Close your eyes, bringing your uh, left leg, because we were turning clockwise, bringing your left leg back to center, waiting for balance to settle in. Once you've gotten to balance, we go to the traditional second pose, camel. Coming to your knees, two hands touching the lower back. The touching your heels was a modification. So we're just going to keep our hands on our lower back. Inhale, chin towards the sky, gaze to the top of the mat, back of the mat. Exhale, chin to the chest. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, shoulders down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One question you might have about camel is how far for the knees to be apart. Uh, we are in the business of protecting our knees, so it's rare that you're going to be doing poses like this. It just, I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what pose would use that, and nothing comes to mind. So just a, an easy rule is parallel is the width of the hips. The knees are just sitting below the hip bones. If you want to know what that is, it's two fists together, and you put them between the knees. And that is a safe width, especially for camel. Third one is J, traditionally. So we're on the ground. I'm gonna protect my lower back. And I'm going to exhale two legs up. You can also exhale one leg up at a time and have the other leg meet. Gaze goes through the thighs. Inhale, everything rela relaxes down. Exhale. Inhale, everything relaxes down. Shoulders, shoulder tips, the goal is to keep them on the ground. As your abs get stronger, that will become an easier and easier challenge to meet. Number three, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Okay, now we are at number four which is tabletop, reverse tabletop to stack pose. You're going to intentionally place your feet so that they are hip width apart, palms of the feet on the ground. You're going to place your hands so that they are beside, just behind your hips and just outside of your hips, using that same grip to protect your wrists, of course, and um, the palm is cupping, and of course, shoulders are down. Your wrists and your feet, the things that are in contact with the ground besides your seat, are not going to move. Let's begin. Inhale, reverse tabletop. Gaze looks back and over. Shoulders down. Gaze looks back and over the back of the mat. Exhale, seat comes to the ground. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, reverse tabletop. Exhale. Inhale, reverse tabletop. Exhale. Number five, inhale, reverse tabletop. Exhale. And the fifth of the five poses. Traditionally, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Of course, you can do the modification. Protect your center. 
protect your lower back. Toes flip towards the front of the mat, shoulders down. Let's begin. Knees up or knees down, whatever is comfortable for you in your upward facing dog. Inhale. I mean, exhale. <laughs> exhale. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. I'm taking the gaze up. You don't have to. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Last one. Exhale. Inhale. Okay. Fold back. Mm, take a nice child's pose. Mm, the counter stretch to that upward facing dog back. And let's come to seated to complete our practice in gratitude, hands come to the heart. And before we stop, I'm going to recommend phase by phase because of course, we're always thinking about how we can accommodate our menstrual phases in any of our yoga practices. Soldier phase and, pre and peacemaker phase, which are follicular and that moment when you go from follicular to ovulation to luteal. In those two phases, you can do this full out. When you are in luteal phase, mid luteal to late luteal, you're going to go as your energy allows. So you might go slowly, still do five, but go slowly or modify as much as you need, keeping a regular tempo or both. In priestess, you may skip these all together. If you've made a commitment to let your body have access to these movements as you are uh, shifting into a regular yoga practice, then just go very, very slowly and give yourself plenty of time. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me today. And as always, I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace. Mm.